after the success of our third de Mazenod family national gathering, the committee got together to review the ideas that came from our discussions on that day. While there were many good ideas from our gathering that we hope to implement, the challenge from the Superior General, Father Louis Logan, was taken up as the theme or somewhat of a framework which we hope to implement um, some of these ideas over the next 12 months. In his address to the gathering, Father Louis Logan challenged us to find a way to commemorate the 200th anniversary of St. Eugene de Mazenod's experience of deep conversion, his experience of affirmation, or a moment of grace, as he describes it, which occurred on the 15th of August in 1822 during the enthronement ceremony of the statue of the Oblate Madonna. The other thing, um, it, it, August 15th, uh, maybe you spoke about that, is um, 199 years since the founder, St. Eugene, had a, a tremendous, powerful experience, uh, a, a great grace. So he, he, he started the um, Missionaries of Provence in 1816. They got together and in six years you know uh, priests had come and gone and there was you know there was a lot of struggles there the the bishops wanted their men and eugene wanted uh, he was he was taking diocesan priests and uh, there was jealousy there was fighting there was competition and uh, so six years later uh, 1822 he is pretty discouraged he is depressed he is um, saying, is this my thing? <laughs> is this my project, my personal? Am I, you know, uh, calling my own shots? Uh, am I, you know, doing my own thing? Or is this missionary group, is this what God wants? So, you know, he's in this struggle and uh, very discouraged. In August 15th, 1822, he is, uh, it's a feast of the Assumption of Mary. And he has the uh, the mass, and then they uh, we're going to go with the procession with the statue. Well, at the end of mass, he blessed the statue of the Oblate Madonna. I don't know if you know. Uh, I think you do. How the Oblate Madonna? I, I have it back here on my desk. I'll, I'll get it for you. This is, a, of course, a copy. Um, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon at her feet, and on her crown, on her head, a crown of 12 stars. It's this, you know, Apocalypse 12. Uh, uh, there was a great sign that appeared in the heavens. Well, he was blessing the statue. And as he blessed the statue, all his, his turmoil, his depression, his trouble, evaporated and he had received a grace that this puny as he wrote once this puny little group would be a source of great uh, missionary activity and virtue in the church and he, he he went back to his room and wrote to father Tampier, his his colleague his his best friend and uh uh, he mentions the experience, of course, as usual, he doesn't say too much, but it's one of the strongest experiences, if not the strongest, that he had uh, it, through the intercession of Mary. So uh, I think, and then later on, they said the statue uh, smiled. He, he never said that, but certainly we can say that it was a spiritual smile uh, that blessed his mission, his work, and said it was, you know, God's will, it wasn't his own thing, and uh, alle relieved, alleviated all his depression, all his worry. So <clears throat> this year we celebrate 199 years uh, since that experience, and of course next year will be 200 years. So I think it's kind of a we, we talked about a Marian year, but you know, there's too many, St. Joseph has his year and I wouldn't want to take any thunder away from St. Joseph. 
So I think in our own way, you know, once a month, we can remember in a special way, maybe uh, at the 15th of every month or something like that, remember this grace, because I believe it's not simply a grace for the past. You know, I think Mary smiles on us today. She continues to say uh, this, and in the Pope, Pope Francis said that to us in 2016, the church needs you. The church needs your missionary charism. And especially like, as I mentioned in, in Australia, in um, Europe, in North America, the secularism is so strong. It, it's exactly, I think it's not exactly, but it's like the time of St. Eugene, so many people had abandoned the church and he, he, he got his missionaries on fire to, to uh, uh, rekindle the faith in the people. And we're in a similar situation. So uh, of course, uh, prayer is very important. And I think praying to Mary and asking her, uh, we claim this grace for us today. I mean, we can't just say that. Our lives have to express that we, we are living holy lives and uh, we, we claim the grace that Eugene received for our own time. And we claim Mary's smile upon our mission, our work, our lives, our, our families, our church, our congregation. So maybe in some way um, in, in, in Australia too, you can um, prepare for August 15th, uh, 2022. So as the Damazanov family, we would like to take up this challenge by continuing to take steps to fulfill this year's theme to become the most united family by dedicating a year to explore moments of grace in our lives and in the life of our community. It's important to see how God's grace, that is God's spontaneous unmerited gift of God's love and redemption in our lives has influenced us in the past but also presently works amongst us. I see three key moments or significant moments of conversion or moments of grace in Damazanod's life that gave him the vision and the strength to found the congregation and to shape the charism which is the gift we receive today. The first of these moments was before the cross on Good Friday when as a young man he recognised God's uh, Christ's love for him and his own dignity, his worth, which compelled him to share it with others. From that moment on, he was a man of action and became a priest. The second moment of grace was when he was a young priest, when he fell ill with typhoid while serving as a chaplain to the Austrian prisoners of war. He became so sick that basically on his deathbed on the 14th of March in 1814, just three years after his ordination, he received the last rites of Viaticum, while at the same time his youth group prayed at the foot of the statue of Our Lady of Grace. Miraculously, he survived, although his recovery took over two months, and through this dark night of the soul experience, he came to realize the realization that all would end with him, and the grace, and the grace from this moment was community, to invite others to join him in his mission. He's, he invites other priests to join him to re-evangelize the poor and the abandoned. Once he has founded this community, there were many trials, yet Our Lady, in a moment of grace, reassures him on the 15th of August, 1822. Damazanot himself reflects on this moment in a letter to Tompia, where he says, Would that I could share with you all that I experienced in the way of consolation on this beautiful day devoted to Mary, our Queen. I'd like to think that I was understood and can well believe that all the faithful who came to our church this evening also shared the fervour that inspired me at the sight of the image of the Holy Virgin, and greater still shared the graces which I dare to say she obtained from her Divine Son while we were calling upon her with such affection, because she is our Mother. I believe I also owe her a, to, to her a special experience that I felt today. I will not go so far as to say more than ever, but certainly more than usual. I cannot describe it too well because it comprises several things, but all related to a single object, our dear society. In the same way that Damazanod needed reassurance that his small community of priests needed to overcome trials and challenges, we too as a Damazanod family seek God's grace 
on our efforts through the intercession of Mary, our mother. As we take up this year's challenge to create the most united family, we as the Damasinod family seek to do this through dedicating this year to reflect, to explore and to be open to moments of grace. We will mark this over the next 12 months by preparing something on the 15th of each month to reflect on, to share and to celebrate together. With the new, unique challenges we face in the Australian province, a physically big province, a rapidly changing world, a divided church and a world pandemic to make it just a little bit more complex, let's be open and attentive over the next 12 months to God's grace present in our lives and in the efforts we make as a community and as the Damazanod family. God bless.